with a capacity of 200,000 barrels per day, which is more than enough to meet the domestic demand of 80,000 uh, barrels per day, the government has commissioned the central oil refinery, the largest and most modern refinery in West Africa. The refinery, which is a joint venture between the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, GNPC, and the Central Group, a Chinese conglomerate, is expected to create over 10,000 direct and indirect jobs and generate $1.2 billion in an annual revenue for government. But we ask, will this be the game changer for Ghana's economy and, of course, the energy security? And what's going to be their impact? on the cost of petroleum going forward. Let's explore this angle as we've been joined by Zoom by the Chief Executive Officer of the Chamber of Bulk Oil Distributors, Dr. Patrick Kwekwofori, and of course, um, the Executive Secretary of COPEC, Dan Kanamwa, on these developing stories. Thanks so much, gentlemen, for joining me. First off, I would like to start with you, Dr. Kwekwofori. Now, the setting up of Central Refinery and the takeoff of Dangote um, should basically come as a good news, isn't it? Kindly on mute for me, sir. Yes, sorry. Uh, good afternoon to your listeners. I think it's a welcome news and it's a good news for any industry player and then anybody who also is interested in pro promoting the Ghanaian content, although you may think that it's a foreign own, in mm. as much as it's giving jobs to the local people and then the opportunity that that uh, brings to all of us within the downstream sector and our overall energy security is something that we cannot uh, sweep under the carpet. So I think it's, uh, it's a welcome news too. Uh, and Dr. Fori, I'm interested, will your members consider buying products from the local market now that Centro is in or import from Nigeria and other markets? We are already buying from them and I think uh, most of our members have also been dealing with them whilst they were even uh, putting up the plant and i think we need to commend the regulatory institutions and the uh, dear chairman also for uh, the existing working relationship that we're seeking to build mm. but with, there are a lot of things that we can still do together to ensure that there's a smooth running of the refinery and then also uh, the overall Ghanaian populace can also have access to cheaper fuels which maybe we'll delve into later on. I'm curious, what will be the impact on the prices of petroleum products going forward if your members decide to source locally? From uh, when I received the call for this interview, a few background checks that we are already aware of from some of our members, if for nothing at all, already uh, most of our members are buying in CDs from them, which somehow reduces uh, they are raised with regards to the uh, forest uh, issues that we uh, that have bedeviled the sector for some time. So that gives us some form of comfort with regards to that. The issue of uh, demurrages that normally has also been a thorn in the uh, in the flesh of the importers. I think this is also something that is coming down. With the other uh, benefit that we seek to gain with regards to. Uh, insurance, insurance, and then other uh, fleet charges that normally goes into the supplier's premium. These are costs that uh, you can easily uh, get rid of when you are dealing with that. And even if it's being passed on with regards to the crude, because there are multiple products coming from the crude, it is spread thin that you know any particular buyer would not necessarily feel the impact of that and basically as is explained or, or the, uh, the concept of economies of scale so these are other opportunities that it brings with regard to storage and then other local uh, handling of the product locally too you will stand to have somehow a minimal cost within the enclave where most of the depots and most of our facilities are also are also how so i think these are some of the few things that we can easily talk of in terms of the benefit that it can really impact all right uh, uh, let, let, let's shift focus now and it's been one month after the npa started enforcing the new requirement for products how are your members coping with that oh we i think uh, the last time i told you we've mm. always been law abiding and the rules uh, the rules have not changed 
once you bring in product until the MPA and the Ghana Standard Authority certify that those products are good for the Ghana market, you, it will not come in. Their concerns were that uh, certain products came in, and that is how they needed to have checked. And that one is now uh, within the mandate of the members because somebody uh, ought to have checked the quality that is coming in. And I don't think those products, if they even track it, they could really link it to. There may be other chemical composition which we are seeking to build further collaboration with GSA and then the, the regulator to ensure that we enhance internally our research, our research team to track uh, products so that in terms of even handling the products uh, in the course of the transition from either uh, some storage facilities or even uh, some of the cars, uh, people putting other chemicals in the cars or something of that to really trace exactly where such issues were coming from. And I think the MPA did a good job when they went back to the terminals to start checking the fours that were there. I think it gave them an oversight as to how to, they can handle the problem. And I All think right. that was, um, they decided to change the new and come up with those new uh, quality specifications, which I think we welcome that since it's, it's within their mandate and we've been supportive like we've always been and also complying with that measures since its inception. Very well. Thank you very much, Dr. Patrick Kwekufori, for your time. He's the chief executive of the Chamber of Bulk Oil Distribution. Speaking to us there. Thank you so much, sir. But uh, Duncan is still on with me, though. Duncan, uh, thanks so much for uh, your company. I read your article about the presence of central oil refinery. To cut the story short, you describe it as the final nail in the coffin of Tor. Why? And with for me, Duncan. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, Central doesn't look like uh, any other refinery, of course, with the private sector, uh, will be interested in one, uh, the cost benefit of their investment uh, by way of whatever profits that uh, would accrue to them. And so when I listen to Dr. Furry and the suggestion that uh, we are likely to have Central uh, mitigate high fuel prices. Uh, I will be a bit skeptical because already uh, there's a lot of products coming out of Central morning, afternoon, and even in the night, as late as 11, uh, people are still loading off Central. Uh, not everything that has been loaded from there so far uh, has been products that they've had to refine. Uh, so I am not quite too optimistic, especially with the fact that the local refinery, which is the Mahoyo refinery, uh, we should have been, you know, a, a bit of a competition to send to uh, a bit of a driver uh, to fuel pricing, I mean, in the country generally, uh, as we speak, is off. And it doesn't look as though on the ground there are any plans. In recent times, if you recall, the worker unions uh, across board have been agitating for one thing, to get Tor back to running. It is so because the, the, the refinery in Tor uh, has lost its workforce. The very technical brains, a lot of them have had to now sojourn to uh, Iran, Iraq, uh, places that ordinarily Ghanaians will not go uh, because their job security here cannot be uh, assured. Then again, I also do a bit of digging to find out uh, is Central really recruiting uh, local talent? I can put on. Uh, mute for me. So make, and so, okay, so make that, make that point for me once again. Yes, I'm so here. Yes, so uh, is Central really coming to step up to be able to uh, employ the Ghanaian technical hand? What I can put on record this afternoon is that go to the control room of Central and it's full of the Chinese, uh, 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 I mean, technicians. And so in, in one breath, Central could also help the market, but in another, job security for the technical people, uh, the operation people at all, you cannot guarantee that as far as the private refinery is concerned. All they right. would, of course, do whatever will benefit their numbers. And for me, the earlier we think of getting tall back to work, the better it will be. Otherwise, if the market becomes a monopolistic market 
that only dealt with a foreign, I mean, owned refinery whose interest right, largely would have to be profit. Uh, I'm not quite certain that the petroleum security you are looking for, uh, you won't get it. And then again, the fear of that vertical integration bit. Not long ago, you record that transporters were up in arms against Central for. Duncan, uh, if you could make that point for me in a minute, I would appreciate it in a minute because we barely have time. So yes, we can make yes. it. Oh. I was saying, not long ago, the transporters were up in arms. The vertical integration fear that once Central becomes the only player as far as the refining space is concerned, you may have Central now decide to even go into the transport business and then when it suits them, they may also decide to even buy the local fuel station so that once they are done refining, they don't need to sell to anybody. They can get, I mean, companies across the value chain and ship products to the, the filling station for right, you Duncan. and I to buy. All right, that will be a dangerous thing if we don't take care. Very well. Thank you very much, Duncan. I'm executive secretary of COPEC speaking to us there. Ending.